In this video, I'm going to talk about measures of center and spread. So you should be able to describe the center and spread of quantitative data. And we've got a few types of measures of center and spread. So first, I'd like to talk about the measures of center that we're looking at. Now, um, when we're dealing with measures of center, we're, we're talking about the mean, the median, and the mode. Those are the three common ones. And if you take in, you know, really any math class, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, they talk about um, central tendency, measures of central tendency. And we're looking at the mean, median, and the mode. Now, these three examples here are all ones that have, these are called unimodal data. And unimodal because they have one mode right here at the top. Wherever that is, that's the mode. That's the most common. So if you remember from those classes, that the uh, the mode, the mode is the most common. Okay, so we're we're just looking for the one that occurs most often. The median. The median is the middle the middle term, or the middle number. Um, what is right in the middle of the data? What number is in the exact middle of the data? So if we're looking for the median. We just go, we look, think about how many terms there are, go right in the middle. And the mean, the mean is the average. And you know how to calculate an average. You add up all the terms and divide by the number of uh, elements there are. So sometimes you see it as, um, you know, the sum of, of, the, of the elements divided by the n, okay? The number of terms we have. I'm not really going to use that. Uh, most of you already know what the average is. One of the most important things to know is though what is the average and the median? How are the, that relationship? How is that relationship with the shape of the distribution? Well, if we have a shape of a of the data that are symmetric, the mean and the median are pretty much equal. So the closer they are together, the more symmetric the data are. If as we get skewed, the mean and the median start to go further apart from one another. Now, if something is left skewed or um, sometimes called negatively skewed or sometimes called you know, skewed to the left, the mean is going to be smaller than the median. See, the median is not really affected by these really big outliers here. The mean, however, is because we're adding up all of those things together and dividing by the number of things. Where the median, we're just looking for the middle term. So the mean is affected by outliers. Same thing on this side, the mean is going to be pulled, it's going to be pulled towards these outliers. So a bigger outlier will me make the mean, the average, go down. You know, this happens a lot like uh, if you have um, two, you have uh, 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 scores that are high in a class and uh, your average is low, it could mean that you have a few people that got really, really low scores although your median could be still up high. So um, knowing which way the median and the mean are in relationship one, to one another can tell you what the shape of the data look like, whether it be skewed to the right, skewed to the left, or symmetric. So uh, what are the measures of spread? Well, when we talk about spread, we're really talking about the variability in the data. How is it, how is it uh, changing throughout the whole thing? So uh, where measures of center looks at the middle of the, of the picture here, um, spread looks like how far apart are these data. And so there's two real ways that we can find that. And there's another one called the interquartile range, which we'll talk about in another video. But um, the range of the data is the uh, maximum value. So it's the maximum uh, minus the minimum. So what we would do is we just we just subtract this and we'd have our range. Now, um, this is not a, it's this is not an interval. So we don't say that the range of the data is between 20 and 3. We don't say that. The range is a number. It's one single number. It's the maximum minus the minimum. And we're going to get we're going to get a number r. So we would say that the range is 20. Um, we want to make sure when we're doing that and we're describing in context though that we have some sort of context to what does 20 mean, right? Now the standard deviation, uh, this, is, this is the variability in the middle as we compare it to our average. So um, I guess a way to put this is, is if we have data here, and I'm just gonna draw kind of curved data, symmetric data here. Uh, as 
this data goes out, you know, as we get values out here, um, we're interested in knowing how far away, you know, on average, is a piece of data to the middle, to the mean. Okay, um, standard deviation. We're going to use standard deviation to talk about spread and variability when we have symmetric data. Um, it doesn't really make sense to use to use standard deviation when we don't have symmetric data. So if the data are skewed to the left or they're skewed to the right, we're not going to use a standard deviation to describe the spread. We're going to use the range. So the range we, we're, we can really much use all the time, but um, most of the time we're going to use it when it's uh, skewed data. But when it's not skewed data, it's good to use the standard deviation. And again, what the standard deviation tells us is it tells us kind of on average how far the data away from the from the mean so you know if you have a standard deviation of, of one um, that tells us kind of kind of the idea of you know if I have a bunch of data they're gonna be about one you know one what well let's say they're one centimeter one centimeter from the average here the middle so it tells us a little bit about the consistency of the data the bigger the standard deviation the lower the consistency of the data the smaller the standard deviation, so the, the smaller our standard deviation, the more consistent our data are. Um, let, let me give you an example. Uh, if, I had a, if I had a class and they took a test and the standard deviation was large, then that would tell me that there's a, there's a lot of variability that, uh, that everybody kind of scattered out where they are on the average. If the average is 75% and the standard deviation was really big, like 10, then, then we could think of our, our data as somewhere all around 10 scattered out among the class. You could have uh, people that have you know 65, 75, 85. They're, they're pretty far apart. Where if I had a, a standard deviation of something like two, that would mean that most people were around 75, 76, 77, or 75. 73, 74, so it tells me that the class was more consistent on their grades closer to the average. That's what the standard deviation means. So let's suppose that we're looking for um, standard deviation, mean, median, mode, and range. So we're going to calculate a few of these um, pretty simply. And we, you know, when we get to large data sets now at this level, we're really going to want to use some technology. So we're just going to go and enter this into our calculator. And I'm going to use a, a TI Inspire because that's kind of what I, I use in my class. So um, so what we want to do here is we want to add a, we're going to add a page here. And I'm going to add a uh, listen spreadsheet so that I can enter in my data. And I'm going to call this data, um, let's call it movies. OK. So I'll call this data movies. And in my movies data, I'll just start plugging in all the data into one of my lists. Okay, now that I have the data in my list, there are plenty of ways I can do this to find um, all these, these mean, median, mode and stuff. But I'm just going to go over to uh, my other column, just right here. I'm going to say menu, statistics, stat calculation, one variable statistics. And my number of lists is one. Um, my X list. Okay, that's not, it's movies, so I want to click on movies. And then you're going to just tab everything else um, and hit OK. And you've got all this stuff here. So go down to this little one that says X with a little bar. I know this is small to, to see, so hopefully you're using a computer and not a little phone uh, when you're watching this. You're going to want a bigger screen. X bar is my average, so that's my mean. My mean is 6.4. So my mean here is... 6.4 my median through my calculator my median it should say median here median is 5 my mode is not going to show up on this so I'll have to just pick it out from my data here and then my standard deviation my standard deviation is going to be s X here. So this little SX estimate standard deviation is 5.9. So 5.9. 5.9. Okay, so this is pretty spread out. 5.9. It's probably because I have some big outliers here. 
okay? And as I can see, I have a mean of 6.4 and a median of five. So if I graph this on a, on a number line, here's five, here's 6.4. Um, this is my mean, oh, this is my median and this is my mean. So since the mean is bigger than my median, I know that this data, this data are probably skewed to the right. Okay. Okay, so I got one more thing uh, very briefly, if I can just run through this very quickly with you. Create a dot plot and describe the shape, center, and spread. So when you create a dot plot, all you're going to do is make a number line, and you're going to put these numbers in a number line. So, um, you know, three, four, five, six, and then I've got an outlier way out here at 15. And you're just going to put dots where you see. So five, I'm going to put, I'm going to put dot right here and then four, a dot right here, six, and I'm gonna keep filling this up until I've got all my dots in this. So I've got my data filled in here, and I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add another five here just to get this to be um, not unimodal. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six, so this is six, six and then it goes down to two so now uh when we when we see this this is the just this is basically like a histogram okay so so you know i can make a histogram here looks kind of something like this all right and um if i did that histogram um you'd see that this is without 15 this would be pretty symmetric so how do i describe the shape center and spread well the shape I'm going to say that this shape, even though it is kind of, it is skewed to the right because of this 15, uh, I'm going to say it's symmetric. We'll just not count the 15. If it was 15, we'd say skewed to the right. The center, now we have to pick the right center. If we're dealing with skewed, then the center is going to be the median. If, it's, if we're dealing with symmetric data, then the center, we're going to use the mean. If we're doing, dealing with spread now and we're dealing with symmetric, then we're going to want the standard deviation. If we were dealing with skewed data, skewed, then our spread would be the range. So that's how we would describe it, and we would describe it in its context. So we'd say something like, you know, um, in a finite math class, the pairs of shoes has a shape that is symmetric with a mean of, you know, whatever we find the mean to be, and a standard deviation of blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's it in context. Uh, so that's all I got on this. I know I kind of rushed through it. Um, go back and, and pause it, take a break here. Um, there's a lot of the stuff that I went over. So just remember a few things here that um, the shape, symmetric or skewed, the center, for symmetric data, we use the mean, which is the average. For skewed data, we use the median, which is the middle term. Spread. For symmetric data, we use a standard deviation. Spread for skewed data, we use the range. And then we can calculate all of those in our calculator now. We don't really need to do it by hand. All right, that's it. Thanks.